What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about what very well may be the worst shuttle in all of Star Wars ship history. It actually does many different things well, and it's actually pretty good as just a light freighter, but it's one of the rare times that the Sith Empire made a terrible ship design decision. Let me just say I actually really like the look of this ship, but I really wish it was as great as it looks. Some of you might hate the look of this ship, and you will think the ship is as bad as it looks. It was manufactured by Republic Fleet Systems after they bought a whole bunch of ship plans from Kellenek Industries, including the KT-400 military droid carrier. You can see the similarities in this long neck protrusion, laser cannon placement, and overall body design. And to start off on a good note, it is actually quite cheap. The original freighter model was only 125,000 credits, just a bit more than the later Millennium Falcon, and less than half the price of the KT-400. You got a decent Class II hyperdrive, and even a great armament with two turbo lasers and two point defense double laser cannons. I really like that this ship has the ability to fire on freighters and even capital ships with those turbo lasers, while also being able to handle small starfighters with that point defense weaponry. More ships really need to include both of these weapon types, and it's amazing that it could all be controlled by just a crew of two, so good on the Herald in this respect. But with a top atmospheric speed of 600 km per hour, or 373 miles per hour, it was 25% slower than the KT-400, and 30% slower than later craft like the new class shuttle. We really gotta compare the ship's stats for cargo and troop capacity, but to better understand that comparison, let's first look at its size. At 28 meters or 92 feet long, it was 2 Wookiees longer than the KT, and 9 meters longer than the new class. Being 10 meters or 33 feet tall, it was just a Jawa shorter than the KT, and nearly the same height as the new, if you ignore its wings. At 22 meters or 72 feet wide, it was a Wookiee wider than the KT, and two-thirds the width of the new, but again, keep in mind that's just a lot of wing. I point that out because the main body of the Herald is larger than these other shuttles, and yet the shuttle variant holds so much less. Again, the original light freighter version of the Herald is pretty good, being able to haul 70 tons, which is nearly twice the droid carrier. It is unclear how much cargo could be carried to and from worlds in this cargo pod attached to the underside of the new class, but let's assume it isn't more than the Herald. And this would still leave space for two speeder bikes, one land speeder, and five passengers. That's impressive, but for some reason the Sith Empire decided to produce a terrible shuttle variant. The shuttle model nearly doubles the price, up to 222,500 credits, and drops the cargo capacity down to just 15 tons, while only increasing the passenger capacity up to 10. That's an 85% price increase for a 79% decrease in cargo, and only 5 more passengers. This upgraded shuttle variant is only 1 40th the troops on board a KT, and still 1 3rd that of the new class. The only thing that really explains this is that these were luxurious rooms to house important Sith Empire dignitaries. It is ridiculous to think of this much interior space being dedicated to only 10 people, unless this ship was something like a 10 bedroom mansion, with large meeting rooms for war planning. I don't critique things like the Theta class, despite Palpatine's really only accommodating him, but that's because the Theta class was designed to be a highly secure shuttle, purpose made for the most elite of passengers and their close guards. Even then, it could still hold 16 passengers, 50 tons of cargo, and had a Class 1 hyperdrive and a 2,000 km per hour top speed. That is why I mentioned in the opening that the Herald class is an excellent lesson on why specialization is so important. The Sith Empire knows how to make great ships, some of the best the galaxy would ever see, but modifying this light freighter to work as a shuttle is something I would consider a failure. Even our comfy, dignitary shuttle explanation may not fully redeem it but definitely let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. As for its history, the Sith Empire eventually used the Star Forge to pump out great numbers of heralds. There is some evidence that these were kept as the more useful freighters, as they are seen keeping Kolto shipments flowing to the front lines of the war effort. But even before the Jedi Civil War or Second Sith War was finished, Sith Command started to appreciate the more specialized Ministry-class orbital shuttle a vessel that was purpose-built for the shuttle role, and which we'll cover in another video. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind-the-scenes stuff. This ship first appeared in Knights of the Old Republic, but interestingly, I don't see anything on it appearing in KOTOR 2, even though the KT-400 returns. 
Additional facts were gained via the Knights of the Old Republic Campaign Guide, the Clone Wars Campaign Guide, and the Star Wars Complete Cross-Sections. I know sometimes vehicle stats don't make a whole lot of sense, but the shuttle variant of the Herald was one of the most nonsensical stats that I've ever come across, so I just had to bring it to your guys' attention. But that's it for the Herald Class Light Freighter and Shuttle Variant. If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, stick to your specialty, and the Force will be with you, always.